Okay, another position of the week. Obviously, Sam and I have not uh, changed our clothes for a few weeks. And also, Sam, you're busy playing in Prague. How's it going? Uh, I'm winning the tournament, I hope, but we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> we'll so. see. Yeah, this has been recorded a bit yeah. in, in advance, so we could get Sam in as many times as possible. Um, so white to play, again, a position from our Mexican friends. We don't know the region. We don't know anything about it, except that it's white to play. Um, I spend about 10, 12 minutes in this position before I realized what I wanted to play, and I thought of many wrong directions first. Um, do you want to say what you want to play first? Okay, fine. I'll <laughs> say like, if I get it wrong another time in a row. I can't with this really weird move, rook a5. Yeah, I have this move also. So, uh, yeah. and and on a6, you're planning, rook a4. You're planning rook a4 and rook a4. Yeah, yeah so I'll, I'll tell how I got there and then you can tell how you got there. So I wanted to sort of do something because uh, there's no structural real improvement. And I was thinking of things like here, you know, I was, was wanting something to happen here. You know, I would love to checkmate. This one's um, but you take such fun. Yeah, I wasn't even. Uh, yeah, oh, I, I wasn't even sure you. this was winning. Um, sure, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I was sort of thinking here. I don't lose a piece, and uh, maybe, uh, maybe I'm. But I'm also not sure I'm doing anything. Bishop f5 and yeah. bishop g6 will come, and you may just be pawned down. Yeah, and probably I just lost my pawn. By the moment, I might. I was thinking I might lose a piece. I was I was confused for a long time. I was, I then realized sort of that HG was not a big threat because of this queen h2 in some uh, positions, and I wanted the rook on h1, so I thought of king f2. I don't know if you saw this move. Or if you consider this, but I didn't love it. Yeah, and and I just got more and more frustrated with my rook on c5, and I was trying to approach very much as a brute force calculation. In the end, I just decided worst place piece. Where do I want the rook? And I really wanted in the H line, so that's why I came up with rook a5. Um, I always notice that things are hanging, yeah. like the pawn here, which is very easy to miss, um, that this is undefended. But if you can't really take and improve your position uh, on g5, then I'm actually just taking the pawn. And I was thinking here, I got this move and, and rook f4. a6 was very cooperative, though. I, I know. I'm... I'm the best moves are going to be bishop f5 or b5. Yeah, I, I have to say I'm not further in, along here than I'm just thinking, okay, I want to play. Bishop f5 was very unclear. I wasn't sure about this mm, one. Bishop f5. f5 or yes, d5? F5. 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 And I was considering rook a7, but then there is queen e6. And if g4? Mm, bishop b1. Because I was generally happy to play g4. I, I mean, this is what I wanted to do with g4 here, but... Okay, and, and, and you're not sure here. Well, there's and I, I just want to come back here, really. Queen e6 is the point of this whole exercise, to get the queen to the square. Uh -huh. This is where I was struggling a little bit. Okay, so here actually we have a, another moment to think. Yeah, it's, this one wasn't the easiest decision. Um, what if I take on b7? Uh, a7? A7, sorry. And queen e6. And it's, it felt like this should be good, but I thought I couldn't find it. Oh, this, this here, I, I absolutely want to be white. I don't no, know no, where exactly. Even if rook takes b7, no, he takes up the bishop on e6. Oh, okay. Bishop takes. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. And this I didn't think. I'm obviously it. seeing this for the first time. I didn't think this was wildly clear. I, th I actually think white is much better here. After h takes g5. Yeah. Let's say rook a8. But you're not going anywhere. Yeah. No, I'm just stopping the pawns for now. No, you're not. C5. Yeah, but... I'm not going to do anything. Bishop g8. I don't think this stops anything. And on knight h5, you have knight g8, yeah? Yeah. Maybe c5 was too slow, and I had to start with bishop g8 and then knight h5. But you can always go g4. Yeah, I was thinking about this position. I wasn't that 
Okay, I, I didn't see this defensive idea yeah. at all. Like, I thought this was best. I was like, the moment I knew what I wanted to play, I, yeah. I sort of... I wouldn't be surprised if this line is very good for white, but... Okay, let's, uh, let's, again, so here, yeah, we, especially we have the the weakness here and we have the weakness here, just keep our right. call going. Uh, let's uh, do the thing we do, which is we turn on the engine and we, uh, well, we try to turn on the engine. We can, uh, can say that the, the engine was... Uh, Busy. Was busy, yes. Uh, no, mind. Uh, we can see we were doing. Uh, now nah, it blew the whole thing. Now you can see we were doing episodes in a row. Nobody would have guessed. Yeah, not possible, right? Yeah, let's <laughs> let's see if we can turn on. No, we can't turn on the engine. This is uh, the other one. Not allowed to use the engine. This is uh, old man does technology again. Episode. I don't know how many. Uh, two old men. Come on, you're in your 20s. For another couple of months. Yeah, well, I'm in my 40s for another couple of years. So. Okay. Uh, this is the stronger the engines uh, becoming, the more difficult they are to turn on. Yeah, that is true. Uh, so. Okay. so apparently... Every ev move wins? Every move wins. Just uh, don't play H5 is, I guess, the point of the exercise. Uh, is our rook F5 like a bad move? Probably it's a bad move. Oh man. Because a6, rook a4. And then this bishop f5 move, this is the time for it. And g4 and, and a6. And just nothing works. On the other hand, if we played this king f2, then this here is prophylaxis and black's just tied down. Oh, so both of us can't put the same goofy move. But it was really nice. It felt so nice. Ah, it feels so nice. Wait till you actually win. If I if I thought for like two or three minutes, I'd play it like this. Ah, well, what can you do? We suck, but we're all getting better. So, so we're learning. Yeah, so other moves work here as well. Rook c1, rook c2. Let's just see here if there are other moves that are, that are good. Now that's about it. Okay. Is that overthinking, rook a5? It might be. Uh, it just feels wrong. I mean, I, I should say that these positions we're doing, one characteristic they have in common is that they are uh, the widely unusual. Yeah, this they're not not a, so relevant for practical play, but they're still very interesting for yeah. developing skills. Rook a five. It's just it feels like the wrong move, but I couldn't find the right one, and I couldn't see a reason that it was actually wrong. But sometimes you have to be. Trust your intuition. I don't know. It's I think also it's good to do one where I'm wrong, so it doesn't look like I'm computer cheating. Yeah, okay. That's <laughs> for sure. Jakob never does that. <laughs> Is that because I can admit it to uh, having uh, with two or three of Renier's exercise not been bothered? No, no, no. To tell them and I admit it to just, you. I just told it's just, I, I bluffed him because I was tired. It's just I know that whenever it's we... It's years ago. I haven't done it since, I promise. Whenever we do playing positions, I always know it's you making all the moves, so... Okay, the playing positions are different. I check when we when we do training. People are probably interested in this. So when we do training positions, which is like I find some sort of uh, difficult, interesting position where Sam is trying to make as many good moves as possible, um, and of course trying to solve it, which happens not very often because they're, they're simply too hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, what I will do in those situations is. I will start off with having computer analysis. If Sam's exits the analysis or the student exits the analysis, I will at times check um, my moves against an engine where I decide what I want to play and just make sure it doesn't ruin the exercise by blundering outright because that had happened a few times too many for it to be uh, enjoyable. It's always enjoyable for me. <laughs> Yeah, but, but but you have to learn. Um, might so. not be the great greatest. Trick. No, it's, it's yeah. not the greatest chess ring. Anyway, this is getting long winded and so on. And yeah. if people want uh, classes that goes on for for, for a long time and uh, have a lot of chess wisdom with people who are properly prepared, they should go to killchesstraining.com where we have Sam, we have myself, we have a lot of other competent uh, trainers, and we have our good friend Ivan Slogado also. Yes. So see you there. Bye bye. Just a little addition to uh, to this video. After Sam and I we uh, we finished discussing the position, we finally understood 
the whole point of uh, what White was trying to do. And uh, also I had a, talk, a chance to talk to uh, Ronald Rivera, uh, who provided this position uh, since, since we did the video. And uh, he said it was uh, a position from a game of uh, Nogorius, a very famous Cuban player, uh, and that he found the correct solution, which for me is, is absolutely astounding. Um, so let me just explain. So rook c2, rook c1, and king f2 all work in basically the same way. Um, the point is here, I don't know what black will play. Let's say we play a6 just to, to put in a move. Uh, we have uh, rook c1, let's say bishop f5, rook h1. The idea is here that black cannot defend against uh, h5. It's just crashing straight through. And, and there's no defense and it's it's really really beautiful and uh, the level of difficulty is I think explained by uh, the fact that I a regular grandmaster and Sam Shanklin who is a absolute star uh, we both struggle to understand what was happening uh, in the position even after we'd seen the solution uh, Generally, I think exercises that are this difficult are not very useful for, for players, but it can be very good for practicing imagination. I, if you're, you're a coach and looking for material, then this is great in very small quantities because it can sort of remind um, your students of how fantastic chess is and, and, and how many imaginative things there are. But as a coach myself, my main problem from students is that they try to make every solution to every problem be as fantastic as uh, this one. Anyway, I hope you liked this position of the week and uh, I shall now go on to record the next and they might come out uh, with very few hours between them, uh, but hopefully in separate weeks. Thank you.